Hello, welcome to the whole Bush Show. I'm your host, Easy Jackson. Uh, in this show, we're going to be sitting down talking to artists about issues that matter to them the most, all while eating crabs. First guest is producer, DJ, and philanthropist Chariz Marcel. Chariz Marcel is creating a new sound called Afro EDM and working on the Black Water Project, an upcoming project that includes several different uh, genres and aspects of music. Thanks for joining us, Chariz. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. For sure, for sure. It's great. Right. It's great. Demolition. Yeah, man. We, we did you like that. that. <laughs> I, like, I like this. This is real nice. This looks, looks good on you. Yeah. All right, so Afro EDM, right? This, yeah, is, yeah. this is the new sound, Blackwater Project. Yeah. This is the new album. Yeah. Um, tell me about that. Uh, you know, what is it? Um, and what in your personal life experience made you want to go this route uh, musically? Um, well, uh, Afro EDM is, is pretty much, it's, a, um, it's an audio interpreter of the Middle Passage and um, connect it to the yesterday, the today, and, and the future, mm. you know? So sonically, it's all about telling that story. Um, African rhythm is um, the, 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 the topics of the songs, you know, it's inspired a lot by the legacy of Fela. Mm. Um, and it kind of started with, with, uh, with that concept in mind. There was a lot of inspirations behind the concept of Afro EDM. Um, there's other people that also in the world use the term and I saw it in a couple of places, but I kind of really owned it, you know, mm. and, and took it as like, you know, this is who I am, you know. Mm. I've always been looking for that sound as a producer. We always, you know, it's always going to have that sound, you know, right. that, that's like your, your stamp. And um, I always felt lesser than be coming up in the industry as a producer because, you know, Timbaland had a sound, Dre had a sound, you know, Pete Rock, you know, you, you know Dilla, like when you hear these guys, it's like me coming from hip hop. That's what I knew, like, it had the sound, you know? Right. But I also love Quincy Jones, whereas though you, he, his arrangements might be signature, but overall it's like, he does everything. Like, how do you know, you know, what is his signature? And then I realized that, you know, his signature what he, was, was really classy versatility, you know right. what I mean? And um, he mastered that art, mm -hmm. and that's what he did. But I always wanted a, a sound. So, you know, um, with everything that was happening, you know, post Freddie Gray, I would say around April, was that? You know, yeah, April, year, so. April 2015, yeah. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. you know, um, it was just something kind of awoken in me, and I was already kind of, like, wanting to get into more African type of rhythms and music to kind of touch the people a different way. Right. And when that started going down, and then we in the streets, we throwing parties in the streets, it's protesting in the streets. It just was like, I, it was out of a movie, just unreal, you know? And, mm. and to me, it, I just felt wrong for, for um, committing to, to any kind of music that didn't uplift us.
soulful dance music, man, that's all about really, you know, tying in our ancestors to our grandchildren. Right. You know what I mean? And and and, and sonically, we need a story. That we need we need music to tell these times. And I don't feel like there's not enough mainstream quality music, um, commercial music that reflects the times. People right. do it, but it's not. Yeah. You know, it's not at a place where I think it. it um, I think the important thing to do is to really make music that people can just dance to. Right. And then when you feel like listening to the lyrics, you listen to them. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But there's some jewels in some yeah. of these records, and it's just about you know dancing, having a good time, but you know. Yeah, you bring up a good point, like you know, I mean, and and talking about the dynamics of what happened with Freddie Gray, especially yeah. here in Baltimore. Like a lot, a lot of artists, yeah. a lot of people in general, change their their course, you know, and, and, yeah. and you're right, like right now people want substance, they want something that, you know, inspires, uplifts, tells a story. Yeah. So, you know, I salute you for that. You know, you know, we've been in the trenches for a while together, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. you have, you have uh, a non-profit organization, Careers Kids. Well, it's a business, actually. A business, yeah, uh, yeah, LLC. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. an LLC, it's a service, it's an educational service provider company, right. and we partner with non-profits to right. help build their enrichment infrastructure. Right. So I've worked with you at Careers yes. Kids. We've taught kids in Baltimore City Public Schools about about the business of music, yeah. about music production. Um, and then this summer, you worked with rapper Damon Blues, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Beats Crazy. Not Bullets. Yes, yeah. um, why is it important for you as an artist to work with young people and, and kind of, you know, put yourself in, in that, you know, in that setting to educate young people on, on, on music? Absolutely. I mean, um, as a creative, first of all, as an artist, as a creative, as a businessman, um, the magic, people don't understand the power and the magic in youth. Mm. Like, when you remove all judgment, you just listen to them, and you become their friend, before you know it, you become a prophet because you, you already are adding seeds and, 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 and doing something for now for later to, to add to later. Mm. So by listening to the kids, you actually know where things are going because that, that 12, 13 year old kid is going to be 30 years old. You know what I mean? One Another day, yeah. 15, 16, 17 mm -hmm. years. Those are going to be the guys that's going to be running things. You can kind of see where it's going based upon, based upon the mentality of where they're at. Right. So what our, our, our position and our job is to do is to kind of find, I believe everybody's a born genius, right? Mm. Um, there's a lot of a lot of bad things that happen, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, like to people on on the um, come up with though, within weeks that genius can be stripped of, rather than yeah. from the food you eat or from somebody telling you yeah. that you're stupid or ugly or whatever, you know. Um, so our our job is to tap into that genius. Yeah. Mama and Daddy, they sold me. Into the street lights. Then I enrolled in the school of hard knocks, and I passed with flying colors. Why 
So today, what's this? Uh, we're sitting here September 21st, yeah. 2016. Yeah, man. And um, yesterday, we had two black men murdered by police. One uh, seven. You know, Keith Lamar Scott in Charlotte, North Carolina. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, Terrence Crutcher in yeah. Tulsa, Oklahoma. What's going through your mind right now as a black man um, living in America? Well, you know, my timeline was just, uh, man, I, I, my timeline was depressing. You know, it was just, it was depressing. And if you think about, you know, the names you mentioned, and then if you want to add, the, you know, the Mike Brown, the Eric Gardner, um, these are all big black men. Yeah. I'm a big black man. Right. You know what I'm saying? What I'm mm -hmm. saying? So when you see that I'm the biggest threat. Like, of course, you got little dudes getting bodied by police too, but at the end of the day, it's like, I'm a big black man, I'm a threat. Like, you know, I have to smile more just to make people comfortable so right. I have to, so they don't mess with me, you know what I mean? Right. Like, right. So it's like the psychology of like, now, just five years ago, we'll see a police officer, we might say hi to him, or, mm -hmm. you know, a person of authority. Mm -hmm. People were, you know, not as uptight. Now, right. it's like, it's tension. It's tension, yeah. you know, and, and, and um, so, so you, you walk it lightly, but then, you know, it's like, how are we going to move within, with, within all of this that's happening? I mean, because at the end of the day, what's happening has always happened, right? right. You know, it's just that we, now we, it could be, tele, now it's being televised, now it's on your phones, yeah. and now you can actually see a person getting murdered by a click of a button. Yeah. So what's going to affect the yeah. psyche? You're going to have somebody dead, that was deaf, dead, deaf, and blind, yeah. dead, deaf, and going to have somebody that was dumb, deaf, and blind for 10, 15 years and just wake up and, and, and there's a resurgence of consciousness, like, it's crazy, you know? Yeah. People are trying. They want to get into activism. They want to make more positive music. I mean, some people, you know, they buy daishikis, you know what I mean? That yeah. might be a, a small, you know, part of it. But to that, that's, that's just like, okay, people are starting to awake, right. you know? Um, and I think overall we can sit here and, and, and really talk about what are the, the cons of that situation? What happened with those gentlemen that was murdered? But I'm not, I'm not the person to talk about that. We can go deep into the level of depression all day long. You know, right. we lived it. We are right. that, right? right? So I think that our conversation needs to be more about, you know, moving forward. Yeah. And, and about how how are we going to, as, as black men, what are we going to do for the next generation that's coming mm -hmm. up that I, that might not right. know how to talk to a police right. officer or might not know how. I mean, it's unfortunate that we need to have to teach kids yeah. this is what you're supposed yeah. to do because you you know you shouldn't be that right. You know what I mean? It like, should be yeah. It should be obvious. And then you're yeah. right. There, there's so many systemic uh, problems. You know, like we can look at the surface and say, well, white officers are killing black men or, you know, black men are killing black men or whatever have you, but the real conversation needs to be around the systemic change and how yeah. we change the, the root of those problems, you know what I mean? Why, why does he feel threatened by a big black man, right. you know what I mean, stepping out of his car, you know what I mean? Yeah. Why, why, don't, uh, why don't we know how to talk to police officers? I didn't used to know how to talk to police officers. I, I used to have a real problem with police officers yeah. um, and and it wasn't until um, uh, I went on like a, a young people's retreat and they split the guys from the girls and they taught, the, they taught us what to do in a situation when we get pulled over. Yeah. You know, now, I don't know how often young white men are put in rooms right. and taught. Right. <laughs> right. <This is laughs> you... but, but, but somewhere yeah. along the line, there, there, it, there are these disconnects. Yeah. And I think, I think it's important that us as artists um, you know, do do the type of stuff we do to address that. You know, address those things. Yeah, yeah man. I don't feel like myself anymore. Not no more. I think I. Way back, just not off. I got dreams, I know things that you don't, that you don't. I don't care what people say about me, cause that ain't me. Stay so I walk out my food like hello, 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 hello. Stay so Hello, 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 hello,
mainstream mm-hmm. and now you have 10 years plus of that now mm-hmm. right of where they don't have a balance so if you're 15 years old you didn't grow up with a balance unless it came from your parents right. your everyday influence on uh, for mainstream media was not a balanced cultural uh-huh. plate of food with greens and veggies it wasn't uh-huh. none of that you know what i'm saying right. you've been feed, you've been getting audio pork chop for 15 right. years right you know what i'm saying <laughs> so going around with your spirit all right. far, like <laughs> you know yeah so yeah it's just that's that's where my head is at with it man you know to bring the balance and you know you know we got to bring the balance and we can have a good time man bring the balance no yeah with that. definitely definitely so you, you got a song called uh we woke mm-hmm. featuring featuring one of my favorite artists, Lonnie Moore. Lonnie Moore, yeah. Man. Um, and and the lyrics, you know, get on the good foot. Hop on, uh, hop on the good, good foot. foot if your legs ain't broke. Um, hop on the good foot if your legs ain't broke. If your legs ain't broke, you can't have my freedom. You can't have my soul. And it says we woke. Motherfucker, we woke. Yeah, motherfucker, we woke. Yeah, I forgot yeah, what yeah. curse. So yeah, you know, um, yo, so real, man. Um, when I wrote that song, just the concept, you know, mm-hmm. um, I called uh, I called up Lonnie, man. So, you know, I got this concept called We Woke. The first thing, it was a visual at first, because I was imagining, like, this thriller. And, like, those people that were deaf, dumb, and blind, rather, you know, whoever they white, be white, black, whatever, if you, would, if you were not woke before, it's like, I just imagine these people coming out of their graves, like, thriller. Like, mm-hmm. we woke, you know, and it yeah. was just like, they're not dead anymore, like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, there's a resurgence of this, like. So, you know, the song, We Woke, um, is all about that. And, and I wanted the, the beat to kind of drive that kind of passionate, uh, soulful, party kind of thing, vibe, man. And, and, I, and it's one of my favorite songs on the project, that, you know, definitely. <laughs>
Everybody should. I think that you shouldn't do it if you're not it. Like, right. you know, don't hop on it because it's a trend. If you want to turn up and sip lean in your music, I mean, cool, do that because that's who you are, right? I, I don't, I, I'm not, I don't need you to come over here and, 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 and do that, right? But if you want to, and if, if it's genuine, then that's great, right. you know? But I, what I think is just needs to be, if, if you're not going to talk about it in your music, at least have an opinion about it. Like, right. you know, just address it, you know? Yeah. Don't act like it just doesn't happen, you know? Don't act like you don't know somebody that wasn't affected by it. Just don't be ignorant to it because people are watching and listening. You know, I hear, artists, I hear interviews all the time with artists that say, oh, I don't want to say anything too controversial. I don't want to da 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 I'm like, look, man, you know, you ain't endorsed by Nike right now. <laughs> you, ain't, right. you know what I'm saying? Right. You ain't have no, you're not. And we at a point now, when, especially when you're independent. This is what I love about how independent artists now are just becoming major artists. Because before, you know, you had all these alliances with these major companies and, and it kind of, when they started giving us all this money in the, in, the, in the mid to late 90s, people started shutting up more. Right. The deals got bigger, mm. the mouths got closed, you mm. know? Um, and, it was, and, and it was very smart. It was, it was just brilliant how yeah. they shut us up, you know what yeah. I mean? And all, I'm like, wow, this is what they did. You know, you see somebody get a deal for 20 million and, and they don't speak about it, you yeah. know? And um, they don't want to upset the people who's responsible for right. that situation, you know what right. I'm saying? For uh, our, you know, before our situation are the same people that's investing in the music that's going to keep right. us down, you know? So I don't need anybody to just jump up and go political. And even with me, I, I still produce records that's about just, not, you know, nothing about that. We right. still make songs about that. All I'm saying is that as an artist, it's important that you at least acknowledge it right. as a person, as a man, as a woman, right. just acknowledge it on a public platform, right. not just, you know, we, you, this person, when the cameras is off, and then as soon as cameras is on, you that person. Right. Like, right. Nah, man, I need you to. I just want you to just be 100 all the way through. And that, and that, and that comes with like some guidance. You know, we, the OGs, man. Um, there's, there's not that much guidance anymore. That's kind right. of instructed in the next. You know what yeah. I mean? So yeah. they're just letting them act the fool right. and get away with. It. We must see Pokemon go. 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 Thanks for joining us for another episode of The Whole Bushel. To view all of our past episodes and stay up with future episodes, you can follow our Facebook page, The Whole Bushel. You can also find us on YouTube and TheRealNews.com. See y'all next time.